Hello everyone, welcome to Schneider Electric PLC training tutorial where you will learn Schneider Electric PLC program. So moving on to the third, which is time or the duration, we will understand that this type of data is used to indicate the duration, such as the process control time and time delay used to generate alarms or errors. Data is stored in days, hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. The maximum length of time and precision are implementation dependent. So it depends on depends on the technology. There is no standard for that. And the format of the time is used in the long and short format. We are going to see what we mean by the long and short format. So both forms use the following letters. So use the G for the day. There, H for hour, M for minute, S for seconds, and MS for milliseconds. So this is an example of a short form. For example, we have one day, five hours, 44 minutes, two seconds, 12 milliseconds can be written as G hash 2D 5H 44M 44 minutes, that's 44 minutes, 32 seconds, and 12 milliseconds. Okay. You can also write it in this in this format where we convert the milliseconds as a fraction of a second, like 34 minutes, 23 seconds, and 500 milliseconds can be 34 minutes, 23.5 seconds. So note the use of decimal, which is permitted in the last field of the lead word. And now the long format, so the long format is just the introduction of the time and the underscore to enhance the readability. Okay. So you just add, you just to improve the readability of the above. Okay. It isn't really much different. So the fourth will be the date and time. The date and time information type is exceptionally valuable for recording the date and time of indicated events. That is for calculation of Past period between particular events and for activation of particular activities at predefined time and dates. Date and time information can can be any one of the following. So this table also summarizes that like the type, these are the type, the IEC type, date, we use date to represent calendar dates, the number of bits, okay, we can't specify it because it is implementation dependent. And we use it to store calendar dates. Okay, so the default value also is implementation dependent. So you can check. You can check there the manual. Okay, you can check there the documentation to get this information since it varies as per the implementation. The time of the day or the COD time of the day. So it is used for time of the day. And uh, we use it as a real time clock. The default value is 0 hour, 0 minute, 0 seconds. Then we have time, which is the time duration. It's also implementation dependent. And its default value is 0 seconds. Then we have the long time. The long time now can go up to 64 bits. And the data type, which is 64 bits integer with, with the sign. And the resolution is in nanoseconds. So it's also a time duration and it has the default value zero seconds. Then we have the long date as well. And for the long date, it is implementation dependent and it stores the calendar dates and its default value or its default date value is the 1st of January 1970. The similar data types, date, time of the day, date and time are used for many different purposes. It can activate an end operation according it can activate an end operation according to certain time of the day or specific date. Another example of using this data type is for reporting purpose. It may become necessary to store the date and time when an event was triggered or when an operation stopped working. If the power fails, various measures may be taken when the power is restored, depending on how long 
it was out. When using this data type as a literal, you can use them in two formats or in two ways, the long and the short. So this table demonstrates that like for date, the short format Z, and for the long format, the value of the full date. For time of the day, we use COD, and for the long format, we use time of the day. Okay. So the difference the long and the form and the and the, and, the, and, the, and the short format just comes at the level of adding more repeatability. So in date literal, the format is year followed by month followed by the, the day. Okay, the day. For example, the 21st of February 2022 can be written in this format. Okay, so the first one represents the short format and the second represents the long format. Time of the day literal uses the format as minute second using the 24 uh, scale. For example, the time of the day, okay, like 20 hours, 10, 10 minutes, 44.54 seconds. You can write it in the long and short format as such. And it follows the same way for the date and time so the date and time now is just a measure of the two examples above and if we merge them then we are going to now have the day as the 21st of february 2022 with the time 800 hours 10 minutes and 44.54 seconds okay Next, we are going to look at. We are going to look at. Next, we are going to look at strings. So, a string or a character string is an array of characters used to store quito displays and text information of messages sent to other systems through communication interface. The length of information that can be stored depends on the implementation. So, we can't directly say it. Both printable and non-printable characters can be used in a string and all string literals must be included in a single, single quotes, okay, in some cases double quotes. The data type of string character is represented by the keyword char, w char string or w string. All these data types are used to manage letters and other characters. Now, what is the difference or what are the differences between char, w char, string and w string? The difference between char and w char and string and w depends on the interpretation and the storage of the content. So the w char or the w string has more bit representation more than the string or the char. So the char and string are text in the ASCII format, while the W char and the W string are text in the Unicode format. The Unicode format, Unicode contains all the characters that exist. So if we'll be using characters that are not found in the ASCII, then it becomes the W char or the W string. So this table shows that our char is 8 bits, W char has 16 bits. So the W char and the W string are just an just an extension extension of the ASCII. So, for example, declaring a string, we may say this enters a string and this enters a W string because when working with W string, we use double quotes, and when working with char or string, we use single quotes. So now what are bit strings? They are data types for storing binary, binary data, which is generally used to exchange status information with remote devices and is also used for low-level bit equation, PLC hardware interfaces. The following table shows the different types of bit strings. So these are the different types of bit strings. First is a bit, which is bool, stand for boolean. And it has just one bit, so its range is a logical state. So it can be two or four. So it has default value as false. 
they have this string which are strings or an array of bits a byte which is eight bits binary it has zero values so all of them have zero values as their default values then we have the word word which is 16 bits bits and the double word which is 32 bits and the long word which is 64 bits so we mostly use them when we are reading analog values or writing analog values to output memory so we mostly use word or bit strings now the boolean data type is used for status data and can be false or true false and true are reserved words as we said earlier so you can use them as you can use them for any other purpose data types that can contain more than one bit are used to define the content of a multi-bit data so data types that contain more than one bit are used to define the content of multi-bit data okay so that was it for data storage format in plc now let's look at the memory area in a plc we already said memory area adjusts addresses adjust some address location in a plc these are variables and they refer directly to the storage location of the plc instead of using identifiers we use memory location when we want to have direct access to have direct access to that address location these variables start with the percentage character followed by letters or one or two letter codes the first letter defines whether it is an input output or an internal memory the codes are as follows we have the i which is input so it processes the input image and at the start of the PLC cycle, the CPU copies all the physical inputs to this input memory called the I memory. Q stands for output, so Q is output memory. And during the start of every CPU or PLC operation cycle, the CPU copies the Q memory of copy the Q memory to the physical output okay so it processes the output image then we have the internal memory and the internal memory and with the internal memory the user program reads and writes the data stored in the M memory so here any code block can access the M memory you can configure you can configure addresses within the M memory to retain their value of the data after the power cycle that is after maybe power up you can configure the memory to be retentive not to lose its content or lose its content upon power out okay so that was the first part which we described that was the first part so the first part we talked about the input output and the m memory now the second part remember we said that okay it can contain the first character so we use this now to specify whether it's input output or memory the second part now will now define the nature of the, the data if the second part the second letter is B, then it means byte for example so if we have percentage i b for example then we mean that we're talking about input byte q percentage q w then we are talking about output word percentage m d then we are talking about memory memory double word the g stands for double word which is 32 bits Q stands for word 16 bits, L stands for long word 64 bits. And there could be a case where we are interested in getting just a bit in that word. In that case, we may use a hierarchical notation arrangement where we use U, V, W, X, Y, Z. So we can now, a scenario whereby we want to access a bit in a word. In that case, we are going to use 
the UVW XYZ notation, where U stands for the rack number W, the module V, the module number W, the channel number X, the word, and Y, the B. Nevertheless, we are going to see how we implement we implement this. Okay, we are going to see how this is software implemented, and it may change a little bit depending on the okay depending on the implementation or depending on configuration. Okay, guys, that will be it for this presentation. And uh, please visit our site at www.espalenezone.com to get uh, expanded knowledge on uh, data types. So there, we have explained the different data types like the uh, uh, structure data type, like the stroke data type, like the enumerated data type, which are all uh, derived data types, as well as some examples, situation and uh, you can get the full stack information on uh, data types and their definition when you head on to our site and there you will get detailed access to some explicit engineering knowledge you will need for the upcoming uh, training so thank you for watching and uh, please if you find this video helpful do like uh, share and uh, subscribe so see you in the next video